All right, another live session for us on YouTube. Hello and welcome along to Al's Geek Lab. Today I'm going to do another playthrough of a game that I played during my youth and I think is a good game. So what the hell, I'll, I'll do this, I'll get it done. So if you're joining me, uh, hopefully everything's working. The last time I did this, it didn't work. And I was like, God damn, I've just played a whole hour of a game and nothing worked. But um, yeah, uh, feel free to pop along into the, the chat and say hi and let me know how you're going. Anyway, anyway today's game is none other than Lotus, the ultimate challenge on the IBM PC. Now, I have some friends back in the day who played the Amiga and they played Lotus and Lotus 2. And a lot of people say that Lotus 2 was their favorite I never really got to play Lotus 2 because I had a PC, not an Amiga, but um, I loved the I loved playing the hell out of Lotus 3. As you can see here, it's um, 1993, July of 1993. Um, we recommend to players wishing to play this game with keyboards, read the text below. Apparently, if you press more than three keys at a time, uh, or three keys at a time, then there's a big problem. Um, so <laughs> there you go, the, the real hardware problems. Um, of the day. Now, um, so yeah, I don't think there's much more, more to it than say, let's just get cracking with the game, eh? Let's get cracking. Um, and we will just avoid all um, copy protection. So Gremlin and Magnetic Fields Production. I love the music in this game. And I, I didn't actually know that this intro sequence was in here. I thought that this was that that was it. It just had a couple of credits, and then the other day I was I let this run and didn't appreciate that there's some like digitized graphics and stuff like that in here. So I'll just watch it for a minute. But the sound, I thought that the music, even though it was kind of ad lib music, I thought the music was really good. It was well done. Here's our Lotus. Cool. I was actually watching a TV program last night. It was called Framing of John DeLorean. And I didn't appreciate that um, Lotus had a big part in the, uh, the DeLorean car deal. And uh, it was actually half and half uh, money stakes. It was all embezzled through, um, through Lotus. So it was quite interesting. So I didn't really know that uh, Lotus had such a heavy hand in uh, the DeLorean Motor Company and the DeLorean car as well when it came over to be produced in Ireland, so I thought that was quite interesting. And sure enough, looking at some of the Lotuses of the, of the early 80s, um, you can see there are definitely some similarities to that of the, um, of the DeLorean cars. So here's the, the demo um, to give you a gist of how the game plays. Um, all of the cars on the road are the exact same cars. They're just different colours. And um, you can see here we've got some easy level scores. Hello Paravion, great to see you. Thanks for coming along to the stream. For some reason... Rally Championship 2000. Yes, that was a great game. Um, I definitely... Definitely agree with that. Rally Championship was, was a great game. Um, let's well, let's get into it, hey. Let's get into it. So um, there was a number of things about this game which um, was quite unique. Don't necessarily wouldn't say necessarily that made them great, but they were unique. So for example, uh, well, let's go through here. The gears were automatic or manual. That's pretty uh, pretty normal. The accelerate button could either be the up arrow or the fire button. Um, the controls, obviously, keyboard, mouse, joystick. Um, one or two player, you could do two player sp split screen, which was quite cool. And you could choose different types of uh, courses. I can't really remember what that is, to be honest with you. And um, you can play time trial or a championship. And um, I think that's the main thing. Um, so in down here, you can define your own track. You can actually put in your own code that will allow you to set the particular track. So you can literally make up your own one. And I'll talk about that in a second. Um, the game doesn't have save games, it has codes. So if you know the code that you get for a particular level, um, every time you complete a level, it would give you um, a code. 
code like that that you could type in. <laughs> I don't know what the code is there, so I think I just buggered that one up. Um, oh, it's still got the code in there. That's interesting. Oh, there we go. We can get rid of it. Thank God for that. Oh, how do I get out? How do I get out? Good thing or not. Then there was this thing called Constructor, um, which was basically your option to um, to make your own levels. Um, it was a bit of a gimmick, to be honest with you. It wasn't wasn't really that great, but you could choose here from the scenarios, so you could say, well, I want a, a you know a futuristic one or a marshy one or a hilly one, all that sort of stuff. These are different scenarios you could choose, and you can see whenever you go to a different um, setting there, you can, uh, so there's a motorway style, you can see at the top right, um, the code changes there, so it's E at the start, and then obviously back to A, and so forth, for all the different areas, and then, you know, you just change the, the, the scatter, whatever the scatter is, that's rude, uh, obstacles as well, you know, you can go up and down, and, so forth. and then at the end you get this code, and that's the, that's the code, and track. So that's how you play um, with the the uh, Rex system structure. You can define your own game support. Very good. All right. So um, what we're going to do is we're going to play a championship, and I will go for the easiest of levels because I suck. Okay. So I think that's what this is. I'm just going to leave it there. I think, I think that means it's harder. Okay, let's get going. Um, so you can choose from, I think, three different cars. My memory serves well. So the Esprit S4, the Elan SE, and also the M200. Now, I felt like this was a totally moot point, and it was pointless having three cars in it, because the Esprit S4, in terms of performance, max speed of 164 miles an hour, 4.7 seconds to 60. 264 brake horsepower and a, uh, 261 pounds of feet per uh, torque. And then you look at the st uh, statistics on all of the other ones, 6.7 seconds to 60 and 137 mile an hour. You know, there's no comparison with the LAN. And again, there's no comparison with the M200. Two compact cars, they've got nothing. They got nothing. So what you want is the Esprit S4 every single time. So yeah, yeah, Par Avion, it was pretty smart for um, for 1993, I think. I think you're you're spot on. It was it was a smart smart game um, for what it could do. I mean, I wish it had a save option, but this was ported from the Amiga. And if you think about PCs versus the Amigas back in those days, the PCs had uh, you know mostly typically hard drives by then, whereas most people on the Amiga were still rocking uh, floppy disks. 720k floppy disks as well. So they packed an awful lot in with this game at 7, 720k if that's what they fitted it on with this. Anyway, um, this is our uh, unique thing about the game. Uh, so you've got this little CD player, nice little touch. Zero, track zero is silent and all you get is sound effects. And then there are, I think there are about six tracks that you could choose from here. So here's one. I'm gonna turn it up for a minute. I think that was, was that my favorite one? And that was the title track. That was a terrible track, I didn't like that one. And so, okay, because six tracks. So I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go through, what we'll do is we'll go through each of the tracks for all of the levels, right? So we'll start on track one. And then there you go there. So what you would do is you'd write down that code there and uh, that would, if you get enough time to write it down, and that would be what you'd do instead of doing a save game, you'd, you'd put that track number in and you could resume from where you were. So I'm off. So you could, as you can see, it's basically all lotuses on the road and I'm just hitting another one. So I think the position cars are the ones in color. So those silver ones there, oh my God, that sucked. <laughs> Those silver ones there aren't position cars, are they? Oh yes, they are. Okay. I don't know what I'm talking about then. I don't know why the yellow cars and the silver cars, but they're all they're all counting. So I'm 
killing this. It's about one day you can see the tumbleweed there. So this game, uh, when it came out in uh, 1993, I can't remember quite how I came by a copy of it, but I'm, I thought it was maybe on a, on a cover of a magazine. And it was maybe uh, like the first few levels or something like that you got. I can't remember how I got it, but I loved it. I played the hell out of it. And it would have been when it came out, it was 1993. And I wasn't aware of the other two games at all because, you know, I didn't have an Amiga. And this was the first time I ever um, really knew about this. It's, um, this, this. Well, I didn't know it was a series. So um, the, the, the dynamics are quite good because um, it's got a little bit of um, a drag on it. Uh, so if I take my finger off the steering wheel, I get, I get blown to the right hand side there. So there's a little bit of um, clever stuff going on there, it's basically the wind pushing me. And you can see there there's the checkpoint, and just after the checkpoint you get an opportunity to stop and fill up petrol. Uh, the petrol indicator is that thing up the top right there. And obviously if you get run out of petrol, that is it. Literally game over for the whole game. Not just not just for the level that you're on, for the whole game. Which is about the most realistic thing about this game because if you bash into another car or a big rock or anything like that, you don't die, you just bounce. So um, I guess Running out of fuel was sort of, yeah, it was it was the big no-no in this game. And it was good fun. You had to really think carefully about how to pit, when to pit, and how often you needed to pit, all that sort of stuff. There's a bit to it. So there you go, I'm on first position already. Uh, but that, it, it had a good, um, as from, from what I recall, um, what I recall was that the, uh, I've completely lost my track of thought. <laughs> Sorry, I'm just trying to look at what Paris Avion said there. Okay, can't display how much I love when 90s style head units get included in software. It's such a neat touch. It really is. It really is, isn't it? It is very 90s as well. Okay, so second track. I think this was my favourite track. Okay, it's a city one now. Four laps of three, three kilometers, okay. And you can see it's four laps because there's like a one, two, three, four boxes there. Off I go with a screech and I bump the car in front already. 20 positions. Kind of like the, uh, the feeling of speed you got in it as well. It's kind of... I don't know, always felt quite fast. And not too challenging that you would just, because I'm an impatient kind of gamer, if I, if I don't get good at something, um, then I quickly abandon all hope. But because this game allowed you to sort of ease into it, you would become, you'd be good at the beginning, and then towards the, towards the later levels, that's when you found yourself really struggling. It got a lot harder. Here's my checkpoint. I cannot remember whether you have to refuel on this one. But I'm doing very well because I'm in first position, so this is a breeze. <laughs> he says as he goes off the road. Nobody can mess this one up, I do not know. It must be a... <laughs> there I go, right in that sign. I think it must be because you do have to refuel. I'm gonna refuel. Gas, I'm okay, I'm off. That'll do, just a little bit of gas. 
nobody overtook me. That's me. Him by the looks of it, Anna. Uh -huh. Happy days. This will be the only time I do that. The only level. If I've messed up the fuel, <laughs> I'd be so pissed off. I will not want to start again. I do like the names here, Nigel Mainsail, <laughs> Elaine Phosphate, <laughs> Ayrton Sendup, <laughs> Ayrton Sendup, oh dear, Demon Hill, oh, I guess you'd have to be a particular age to know all of the, the names as well, Demon Hill probably doesn't mean anything to you know somebody born in the 90s, and this is the title track, next race, Race 3 of 7, 8.3 kilometers over 3 stages. Okay. I don't know about you guys, but um, because I'm an old fart, my first PC uh, was an XT. It was an XT and um, it didn't have the, you know, the four, num uh, the four uh, cursor keys that the modern. AT style keyboards have, or all keyboards have. Uh, it just had num numpad, the directional numpad. So even to this day, I pretty much play with the numpad. Ah, I'm all over the place here. This is not good. Oh, no. Why do I suck so much? I don't, I don't recall always sucking this badly. The, the road here is really narrow. <laughs> no! Oh, there we go. Was that an advert for RAC Rally or something like that? On the, on the side, on the signs there. I think Get a little bit better. Yeah, I'm again having to dance on the keyboard here a bit because it's a. This one is all about um, a little bit more skill involved because you've got to um, make sure you don't you don't break too much. I don't. I don't ever break really. Probably because I'm too aggressive as a driver, but I also just take my foot off the gas and then put it right back on again. Quite. A, a, Apply it quite a lot. I don't know if that's the right way to do this. Here we go, second point. Come on. Let's go. Yes. How's my fuel doing? Okay, I'm gonna go for it. No fuel, just go for it. It's only an 8k. Run, it will be okay. Second position. Where are you, number one? Together. You can get him. I don't know where he is. 
Here, here we go. Coming up. Yeah. <laughs> no! No way! Come back! See, this is what you, what happens when you get cocky. Ayrton send up for Avion is Ayrton Senna. Um, I think. So Nigel Mansell, Nigel Men, Nigel Mansell, Ayrton Senna. Um, uh, uh, Elaine, Elaine, I can't remember Elaine. Um, can't remember all of those names, but um, I definitely know most of them are piss takes out of um, real Formula One drivers. I'd absolutely love to see a Lotus do 250 kilometers on a dirt track and keep in control. I'm pretty sure they, they were terrible hand gloves back in the day. Yeah. All right, let's go with this track. Race four, nine kilometers. So there's a chance that I might have to refuel. More dirt track. Real ad libby music. Great. I think uh, the music on the Amiga might have been um, tracker based. It might have been sort of like mod file based. I've got a feeling that it was had some sort of digitized audio. I did hear the audio from it years later. And I'm sure it, if there's Amiga players watching, they'll be like, yeah, the Amiga's better in every single way. I'm sure it is, I'm sure it is. Back then, there certainly wasn't an awful lot in in games between the Amiga and the PC. A lot of the times, um, just around that sort of 1991, 92 area of time, before multimedia really, really kicked off, people got their CDs, ROM drives and stuff like that, and, 1993, 94, probably when I got mine anyway. Just before then, that period of time, so sort of 89 to 90, 93, 92, the Amiga and the PC, the games, the quality of the games, so it was a crossover. I, I feel like up until about 92, games on the Amiga generally were better. The quality, the graphics, the sound, all of that. People on the PC didn't necessarily have sound cards, so a lot of games still only played out the PC speaker. And the EGA graphics, you know, 16 colours versus I think a much bigger colour palette. I don't know how big it was on the Amiga, but it was it's substantially better on the Amiga. So everything was, you know, if the Amiga was still around, I'm sure it would have been that would have won the day. Am I going to refuel? Thanks. No. Yeah, I'm gonna. I'm gonna be okay. I really hope. <laughs> okay. Really hope I'm gonna be okay. There's no way to drive um, conservatively. You. I don't think it makes any difference. The fuel consumption is the fuel consumption. I think it's just based on distance. And there we go. Brilliant. Um, so you're surprised, Paravian, that I'm not running it on original hardware. I would deeply, dearly love to run this on original hardware and in fact I have a compact ProLinear 486DX4 sitting proudly just down here. The only problem is video capture. So if you guys have got any great suggestions on how to do good video capture from VGA and put it onto a live stream on YouTube then um, let me know. Do that.
Okay, try five. This is the rubbishy one. I don't think I like this one. Oh, this is the futuristic course. Oh wow. This one. This one's cool. So there's a lot of there's a lot of laps in this one. So the future, I mean, yeah, this is the thing about Lotus, uh, I think all of them, they weren't, they were quite forgiving in a, in a sense because they, like, you know, you could bash into a car and, and all the rest that wouldn't stop you uh, from going on to win the game or anything like that. Um, and it did these sorts of things, look at this turbo zone, now it's cool, it's good, it was just good fun, there was nothing about the game that took itself seriously, you know, it was all about just sort of arcade style fun. And, and I really liked it for that reason. I I, uh, I was never a serious drive simulator kind of person. Like flight simulators, you know, I didn't really care for all of that. I just wanted something that I could pick up and play and have lots of good fun with. And Lotus the Ultimate Challenge is a game that I, you know, remember always just being able to pick up and play. It was great. So I'm in sixth place already. Fourth was good, but I said I I think this particular level, this this map, you had to be really careful about refueling. So I'm not going to rest on my models here. These turbo zones as well, they they make you go pretty fast, eh? And those little that little white zap thing that came out there, I remember this. So those little white zaps, they can come out, and if you're there at the wrong time, you'll get zapped by it, and that will just throw you. It, it really stops you in your tracks. Like that guy there. Thank you. Dead. Um, have I buggered this up? I wasn't paying attention there. I might have wanted to stop, you know. I need to get fuel. I really need to get fuel. <laughs> oh no. And I just got hit by that thing. Oh goodness me, this is right down to the wire, this. Goodness for that. Should have just stayed there. Got the rest of the tank. Fifth position. There are plenty of devices out there, Paravion, that you can buy that do capture a video from VJ and so forth. I just. Um, I've heard so many horror stories of people buying these video capture things and, and they're just they're just no good and then you've got the audio stuff as well yeah i really need somebody just to go here you go alistair here is the device that you want to buy um retro tech chris he just did a review on a, the device but again the problem is that all these things they're in the us and he reviewed a couple of things and i think they're no longer in production and stuff like that so i just need somebody to tell me look you're going to do this right Here's the one that you buy. And if, I, if somebody just says that to me, I'll be like, sweet, okay, cool, I'll buy that. Until then, I guess it's DOSBox. Which, I gotta say, I mean, if you're playing games of this era, DOSBox does pretty well. Um, it's the sort of earlier ones, the, the ones that you play on your XT, you know, the, the ones that really needed a timer on them that uh, you had to watch out for. Not so great with DOSBox. Right, okay. Feeling time. Oh. I think if you hit right on with one of those beams, it's um, it's pretty nasty. It stops you dead in your tracks. Pretty good at refueling. The fast, fast fuelers. Alright, now I've got to 
bottle, but fourth position. And I make it. And from what I remember, um, so obviously this six tracks of audio, the zero track is just sound effects. And I'm pretty sure that the sound effects are pretty crummy. But I'll do the sound effects as well, just see what those are like. Because it was Adlib, I guess it probably couldn't play the sound effects and the, uh, the audio of the music at the same time. Just wondering why. Probably the reason. It's a very, very playable game. It's a great game. I don't, I mean, it's a game I can play. <laughs> I'm not very good at playing games. So, if it's something that puts a smile on my face and I can play, then it's probably going to be a winner for me. So, yeah, I think it's a great game. Still on the top of the leaderboard. Great, that's where I'd like to be. Okay, sixth track. And this is our sixth race, of course. Now this level, this, this one, kills me. I'm rubbish at this one. I remember this. It's really narrow. It's fast. There's lots of obstacles. I remember. I hated this. Yeah, yeah. Everything's literally every opportunity you get to overtake, you're on a corner. Way 16th position. <laughs> And 
now I've got a pit as well. Hello? Where's the pit? Right here. How embarrassing. What a fall from grace. Maybe there's uh, a way to do this level that I don't know about. Because I seem to be failing most egregiously. I can't even drive when there's no other cars there. And of course there's no road sign. Tell me when the next corner's coming up. I'm just gonna wing it. Well, race is over. <laughs> Not a shock. No. Crash Hard Banger got 10th. I think that's for Gerard Berger. Is that Gerard Berger? Anyway, Derek Werrick. Pump positions. <laughs> Does that mean I'm out? Yeah. Easy level points. Got 95 points. Damn it! <laughs> that's me out. So it gets, gets hard real quick, so the easy, you get to the second to last level of the easy level and then all of a sudden you're scuppered. So there you go, that is my uh, playthrough of Lotus 3 the Ultimate Challenge. I um, I really enjoyed that game, I thought it, was, I thought it was fantastic. If there is another game that you would like me to review on our Speak Lab um, and you'd like to do it in this sort of um, real-time uh, live format then let me know I'd love to hear from you give me a suggestion of your game and we will play it let's play here on Al's Geek Lab until then I thank you very much for watching as always and um, I, uh, I'll see you all later thanks very much Paravion for all of your comments and uh, yeah take care be excellent to each other